once again to Into the Archives. This is our third episode, and if you've missed the previous two on the Cricket Bat from Manville, Rhode Island, and the Arabian brand coffee syrup, be sure to check our Facebook page and our YouTube channel for those videos. My name is Allison Miette, and I am in AmeriCorps Vista with the Blackstone River Valley National Historical Park. I have for you today a specimen case from JMP Coates, purchased for $50 from Mrs. Marjorie S. English of Lincoln, Rhode Island in June 1982. Her late husband, Ralph G. English, had been paymaster and office manager of the Coates Pawtucket plant from 1925 to 1965. Let's take a look. The object itself technically consists of a number of sub-objects, spools of thread, white and in various colors, of varying thicknesses, empty wooden spools of different sizes and designs, and a series of cotton at each stage in the thread production process. The organization is neat and linear. The empty spools in the topmost row, the series of cotton production, two examples of carded cotton and five of different kinds of roving, in the second row, and different full spools and bundles of colored threads in the third row, with light blue, red, green, and navy being the chosen colors. In the fourth row are small, round spools of thicker thread in yellow, black, white, tan, and red. Two of these are turned on their sides to show off the packaging and the J&P Coats logo. The fifth and final row has a number of colored threads on spools and of different sizes. Four are smaller than a dime. These come in the colors mentioned above, yellow, light blue, navy, red, and white. There is also a small booklet in the case which indicates its purpose and acts as a catalog descriptor. The lid of the wooden box is hinged on the top only and can flip up to access the samples inside. They are stored behind protective glass. Mills would produce samples of their work to send out to companies, sort of like physical versions of the beloved Sears catalogs sent to the homes of consumers during the post-war period. This sharing of product enabled companies to develop strong networks and connections between each other, and likely contributed to the huge success of the textile industry in New England. J&P coats originated in the British Isles in Paisley, Scotland. During the late 18th century, the Coates and Clark families were very involved in developing the Scottish weaving and textile industries. Patrick Clark evolved a three-ply cotton thread in 1806 to be used in lieu of silk, which was becoming less available due to Napoleon's blockade of the eastern seaboard around that time, and subsequent difficulties with sea trade. Coates and Clark founded Fergusley Mill in Paisley in the 1820s. Coates and Clark's popularity slowly rose across the Atlantic. Also in Pawtucket, Hezekiah Conan established his thread mill close to the Central Falls border in 1898. Coates merged with Conan a year later under the agreement to manufacture their new six-ply cotton thread at Conan's mill. After this transatlantic move, Coates' thread grew in fame amongst an American audience. After 1913, the company was known as J&P Coates Limited, and the mill complex it operated reached 55 acres in size, spanning both Pawtucket and Central Falls. It employed 4,000 people during its peak in World War II, but as the northern textile industry began to move southward, the factory was closed by the mid-1960s. For many years, J&P Coates was Pawtucket's largest employer. Recently, in March 2020, eight of the buildings of this complex were unfortunately gutted and destroyed by fires. Thanks again for tuning in. There's truly a never-ending spool of tales about the early textile industry in New England, and especially in the Blackstone Valley. Next week's object is going to provide an interesting profile, to say the least. Be sure to stop by our Facebook page and our YouTube channel next Monday for our next video. Cheers! Mm -hmm.